So now I'm going to look at Murray Rothbard, David Friedman, and anarcho-capitalism. Murray Rothbard, uh, famous for lots of things, but particularly his book For a New Liberty. And David Friedman, who's Milton Friedman's son, wrote a book called The Machinery of Freedom. And I suppose the first thing to say is that when people hear anarchism, they tend to think of ideas as being on the left and, in some sense, collectivist. But there is a school of thought within classical liberal thought who are anarchists who base their ideas on capitalism, and that's what we're going to, to have a look at. Uh, Murray Rothbard, he defended uh, his position. He based it on this idea of natural rights, in that sense, similar to Rand uh, and Nozick and other believers uh, in it. But he was also strongly influenced by Mises, and he developed what he called the non-coercive axiom, the non-coercive truth. It is always wrong to use force except in self-defense. It's always wrong to use violence, except if you're protecting yourself against somebody who's trying to use violence against yourself. He says that's the principle we should use to establish what government uh, should do. David Friedman, from a different point of view, he very much follows the same methodology of his father, the Chicago School of Empirical uh, Analysis. He says we answer this question by comparing what's the relative efficiency of leaving things to the market, and what's the relative efficiency of leaving it to the government. Two very different sorts of methodologies. One clearly based on natural rights, one clearly based on uh, consequences. Why do they think the government should be limited? In fact, they go beyond that. They believe there should be no state at all. Well, that raises the question about what is a state? The classic definition of a state comes from Max Weber, the German sociologist. A state is an institution which claims a monopoly of the legitimate use of force over a given territory. So within the society the government covers, nobody else is allowed to use force. Only the government should be allowed to use force. Rothbard criticized this because he said, what does governments do? They violate our rights. They obtain what they want through coercive means. If we don't do what the government wants, they will throw us in prison. So, for example, he says that taxation is theft. If, if somebody came along and took 25%, 40% of our income and said, if you don't give it to me, I'm going to put you behind a jail, we would call that person a thief, a criminal. Rothbard says, well, why do we behave any differently when it's the state that comes along and says it wants to take 25% and 50% of our income? It is the state is simply a criminal which is violating our rights. David Friedman, taking this efficiency approach, he says the state is inevitably inefficient. All right, we carry out the empirical approach. We measure government efficiency versus market efficiency. He concludes the market is always more efficient than government. Whereas his father, saw there, Milton Friedman, saw there were some circumstances where that wasn't true, he argues empirically it's always true. Even things that most people assume that only the government can do, like defense or um, provision of roads, David Friedman argues actually the market can provide these things most efficiently. This is what he argues in his book, The Machinery of Freedom. So they conclude that the best society is one of anarchy, one without any government at all. So government is both illegitimate, it has no specific moral claim on us than any other single individual, and it's also inefficient. It cannot provide more efficiently the goods and services that the market is able uh, to provide. And alternatives exist. We tend to forget, for example, that there are more people employed in the private security sector than employed by the police force. Most people are protected by private institutions, not the police. We just tend to ignore that. We ignore the fact that many disputes between businesses don't go towards state courts. That, in fact, many business disputes are settled in private arbitration courts because state courts are so slow, they're so inefficient, 
they're so unreliable, many businesses would prefer to use private arbitration agencies uh, to do this. So they think that there are other alternatives to the state provide these goods. And they also argue, all right, suppose you do believe in something like a minimal state. If you create a minimal state, it will never stay minimal. It will be unstable. And it will either have to go in one direction, it, which is the most likely, it will start as a minimal state and then it will grow and it will grow and it will grow and it will grow, or, which is what they favour, let's go to anarchism of having no state whatsoever.